The season is coming to an end in Blackpool. All over the town, thousands of hotel bedrooms lie empty. The president, like so many other hotels, is struggling. It needs to pull its socks up if it's to survive. A few days ago, the owner, Mrs. Walsh, delivered an ultimatum to the staff. Why can't we have the best show in town right here under our own roof? Yeah? The best restaurant in town? The best bedroom? We've got to keep ahead of the competition, yeah? Have any of you got any ideas? If the hotel is to keep ahead of the competition, they'll need some good ideas fast. A coachload of bingo players has come to Blackpool to play bingo at the town's premier venues. This has given Steph, the hotel's long-suffering duty manager, an idea. To keep the punters and their money in the hotel, he's decided to host an in-house bingo night. Steph heads down to the front to watch a professional in action. He's never been a bingo caller before. And the game is tonight. On the white, 5-0, 50. Green, 7-1, 71. White, 4 and 6, 46. Steph has been told that he's not to use any of the traditional bingo phrases, such as two fat ladies. 61 all there, winner with the line across the middle. Consequently, if he's not to make a fool of himself, the pacing has to be right. All the A's, 88. One crocodile, two crocodile, three crocodile. All the fours, 44. One crocodile, two crocodile, three crocodile. Three and four. Alan, the hotel's unflappable general manager, is doing some last-minute boning up before an important marketing meeting. The president desperately needs to get more punters through the door, and the right marketing strategy is crucial. Alan and marketing manager Andy have been summoned to the house of the president's owner, Mrs. Walsh. Where's Andrew and Alan? Eh? They should be here by now, shouldn't they? Mrs. Walsh's sidekick, Biggles, is not in a good mood. <laughs> Biggles' mood does not improve when Alan and Andy finally arrive. Oh, Absolutely wicked. Look at you. And I can see that naughty tantrum. I say you're sorry to your mummy. You don't mean all these horrible things, do you? Stop paying attention hey? to the dog. He's <laughs> actually jealous, you know. <laughs> Mrs Walsh is Andy's mother. She's keen that Andy inherits the family business. He joined the hotel five months ago, but already it seems that his best efforts are just not good enough. You need to get selling. I can't understand when you've got a better product to offer them than where they're staying. Why have you not got that business out of there and into us? We want it changing. We don't want them there anymore. We want them in ours. Yeah, I know. There's also so much I can do. But you've got to get them. I'm not a genie. What's the situation now on coaches? Well... I've sent I've sent loads of uh, mail shots out to coaches. I've spoke to quite a few directors and what have you, and I'm just waiting for them to come back. So I think maybe we ought to come up with a a, a properly uh, sorted out sales pitch, and you know start looking for buying signals, closing signals, mm. and try and close some of these 
calls into an order. Do you ask them, can I book you? I could give you a discount if I booked you today. Uh, yeah, of course I do. Because if they're coming across that they're interested, that's a buying signal. Yeah, but I know that... The... And usually a buying signal is next to a closing signal. Well, like I do say... No, I'm only discount. thinking from a sales pitch point of view, Andrew. If somebody says to you, oh, that sounds interesting, that's a buying signal. Oh, yeah, I know. Isn't it? Yeah. And to a salesman, a buying signal from a customer is a signal to you to go for the closing signal. If you're getting buying signals, you give closing signals. And let's get the words. let's get the phones hot. And converting the calls in into bookings. I'm, I'm good on that phone. I don't miss anything. So I mean, what I'm doing is right, and the proof will be in the pudding, won't it? Big oh, what are you doing? Death story to trouble you. Here. Yeah. But, um, a bit worried about your bingo calling. Are you sure you're going to be kind of up for tonight? It'll be fine. Honestly, it'll be fine. I was a bit worried when I was seeing you down at the front. Are you sure you, sh you don't need a bit of practice and or a bit of advice or something? No. Why do you think I need a bit of practice? Well, I would. No, actually, no, no, I'm not saying you need practice, but I did see <laughs> the, the two organisers of the coach party downstairs. Mm. They're actually bingo calls, and it did occur to me that maybe you should get some advice from them. Right. Do you think I need a bit of advice? Possibly. Possibly. Oh. Steph has only three hours to go before his bingo debut. So, what is it exactly you wanted to know? Yeah. I want to know bingo everything. Numbers, everything. Everything you can tell me about bingo. Right, well, Vince is the man to help you with the bingo calling. Yeah. Right. There is a certain technique. Yeah, um, make so it sound interesting. Because yeah. at the end of the day, numbers by themselves are boring. Right. And so the customers know that, and they sit there and they start tutting and moaning. When you're speaking a single number, you use words by itself or on its own. Right. So a word descriptive. So by itself, the number one, or on its own, the number six. Right. Okay, when using numbers like 10, 20, 30, it's 2, 0, 20. Okay. Yeah. You've got to remember one other thing as well. When you step up to the mic, you are actually entertaining from that point. Not just when you're calling numbers, you are entertaining. So especially if you get something like a false call, and you've got a mouthy one over there, you know, he's been heckling you all night, and they make him, no, not again, or it would be, or something like that. Right. And they, get, they really get into it. Right. All right, all right, let's give you a little test, okay? okay? Any numbers you can choose from 1 to 90, and just give it a go. Just read them out as if you were calling the bingo. 7 and 8. That's 78. Two and five, twenty-five. Three and nine, thirty-nine. Oh, on well, its own, number one. You're speeding up. <laughs> speeding up. Speeding up. Oh. As soon as you speed up a little, they pick up on it. As soon as you slow down, they pick up on it. Oh. Got to keep the pace. You must maintain a constant speed. Right. Which is ve it's very hard to do. It is very hard to do. Okay. But you just you get used to it after a while. I'm sweating. I'm nervous about this bingo. Like the Don't worry, the one thing you will learn is if you are doing something wrong, they will let you know. Have no fear about that. Right. They will let you know. And they may not be polite about it. Or these are proper bingo goers, so you know. know. Shaken by the meeting with his mother, Andy is determined to drum up some sales with new coach companies. White's Coaches, based in Birmingham, uh, telephone number 01. He pays a visit to a few of the president's competitors down on the front. Celine Coaches, telephone number 09695117. Bray's Coach Holidays, based in Barnsley, 01226743109. They're on the front at Blackpool. What's this you're doing here? Uh, basically, just getting telephone numbers to uh, speak to directors of companies and hopefully offer them a better deal than what they're getting elsewhere. Is this poaching? Is it poaching? Um, business is tough, isn't it? You've got to do whatever you've got to do to make the business. But to make the business, you've got to be able to get through to someone. Hi, good afternoon. Could I speak to Shirley, please? 
Uh, would it be possible to speak to Debbie, please? Hi, good afternoon. Could, it, could I speak to Janet Shipley, please? And you wouldn't be interested in having a look elsewhere now? It's not even worth me sending some information to you about the hotel. That evening, the bingo fans gather for dinner. We've been yeah. promised an enjoyable evening here tonight. Mm. <laughs> what the prize is any like? I don't know, I hope they're good. Well, a thousand pounds I had to share in, that's 500. So, oh, yeah, but I was so excited that after that, I couldn't do anything right. I was playing all the wrong books, the wrong <laughs> colours. These are seasoned players. They have no idea that their caller tonight will be a total novice. All the eights, 88. All on its own, number one. Four and eight, 48. As part of his management strategy for the president, Alan, the unflappable general manager, is keen to discuss budget control with his two chefs, Graham and Les. We do need to look at food costs because uh, they are a bit high at the moment. We need to work with the budget. For last month, the food bills were approaching 10 grand. And in order to warrant that 10 grand's worth of material, we'd be looking at, um, you know, a lot more people than we've had here, wouldn't we? I've got it in my mind that we should have entrees on the menu that, that are chargeable extra. A more discerning guest might well say, well, I don't mind paying a bit of a supplement. We'd like to have two fillet steaks and a tossed salad. And... We're gonna, I'll sort it out. We'll cross it out. I'll get it back to you, boss. We'll go from there, eh? Hey? Bingo players settle down in the nightclub. I'm here. Despite his nerves, Steph does his best to seem at ease. Good. Four pounds for six. I want three. Meanwhile, Alan gets a call from owner Mrs. Walsh. She wants him to report back on Steph's bingo night. Right. I'm sweating. I'm nervous. Yeah. I don't know what time we should have. Right, well, I love it. That's all makes me alive. Do you know what time we should have? As Steph finally takes the plunge, he recalls the warning from his manager. Be it on your head. 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 Seems to be Bingo's about to start, so has everybody got your bingo tickets? Yes. yes. Right then, so everybody ready for bingo? The ladies in the corner can't hear you. The ladies in the corner can't hear you. Right, we're going to play for a line first. Well, I do believe the correct set is eyes down. Oh, I don't know. Right, everybody ready? Yes. Right, so you're going to be playing for a line first. Yes, and you're going to win a bottle of champagne. Oh. Right then, so eyes down, ready to play. First number. First number, it's going to be three and four. That's 34. All on its own, call number three. All the ones, place 11. Seven and one, 71. Despite the temperamental sound system, Steph completes a nerve-wracking first round. But Steph starts the next round without specifying which card to play. The mistake could reveal him as the novice he really is. Right, are we ready then for the second line? Two lines. 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 Two
Two lines. Are we ready at the back? Can I have a little bit of quiet around the house, please? The worst fears of the long-suffering duty manager are being realised. In a bid to win back the audience, Steph takes a gamble. Even though it's against professional advice, he tries the old-fashioned method of calling. <coughs> Doctor's orders, number nine. <coughs> All the fours, 44. Droopy draws. Droopy draws, is it? Five up! Anyway up, six to nine, 69. Keep it clean. By age, two and one, 21. Shut it. Steph's traditional approach is a success, and he's on a roll for the rest of the evening. will be able to report back to Mrs. Walsh that Steph's big idea was a big hit. The bingo players are down at 8.30 the next morning for a full English. After breakfast, Zoe, the head housekeeper, approaches the manager with another money-making idea. A psychic show at the President. Palm reading and things like that. What, here about. in the hotel? Yeah, that's what everybody calls the back for. Ah, well, yeah, I suppose so. I'm a bit dubious about it, psychics, but... Be a bit fun, won't it? I need to know some facts and some figures, um, you know, yeah. perhaps some idea of who would be coming and whether there'd be a charge and what's in it for the hotel. As long as I'm not going to have my palm read, I'm not the best one to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. To help find a suitable psychic, I don't know what they'll be under. Zoe turns to the yellow pages. What will they be under? Tarot cards. Can't even spell. Mediums. Medium. Mediums. Marketing. Medical. Meditation. Medium. Oh, see, psychics and clairvoyants. P. H. Where does H come before? L. Psychics. No, it's not. P. H. P. H. P. H. Got it. Along. It's PS, not PH. Right. So, how good I am at spelling, doesn't it? Armed with a list of psychics to test out, Zoe and Steph head to the front. You know, perhaps introduce some new strategies. Alan, the unflappable general manager, used to teach business studies at Hinckley College of Further Education. He wants to give Andy the benefit of his managerial wisdom. Yeah, there's some quite interesting points in this book. They do talk about mnemonics. For instance, off the top of my head, Ada is one mnemonic that I use every day, lots of times. Ada, A-I-D-A. Analyze, identify, direct, and action, and how we can apply this to the marketing. 
some interesting modern ideas there um, that maybe not to copy verbatim but to give us some other avenues to explore so that we actually uh, maximise our potential. with the name Peter it's written on my shoulder. So I went to this tattoo parlour and said, can I have Peter? So I said, yeah. So he wrote it down, showed me it, said, yeah, that's fine, no problem, on my left shoulder. So I went in, had it done, got home and said, Peter, have me tattoo done? And he said, go on, let's have a look then. So he had a look and he said, tell me what's my name? And I said, Peter. He said, why the bloody hell does it say David? <laughs> <laughs> so I had to go and pick another tattoo. Um, to cover it so we could put Pete underneath and I had to have a black rose put on because I couldn't get anything else. Free of charge. Free of charge. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe so and Steph tracked down their first psychic on Blackpool's central pier. The job that you're doing, you work hard. Things get passed over to you but you are greatly appreciated, even though at times you may think that you're not. You're there to help anybody out. You get on wonderfully well with the public, with people, and you put a smile on a lot of people's faces. If you saw someone who needed help... Zoe is looking for a psychic who can do more than a simple reading. Someone who has the charisma and talent to entertain a large audience. The future, there's new beginnings, fresh starts here for you. A fork at the bottom of a lifeline is happiness for the future. You couldn't have a better sign. I think that was brilliant. Why? It, she just tell me a thing that everybody tells you anyway. See the size of the balls. <laughs> the point is that you want somebody who's going to sound realistic. Do you not think she was? No. no. Finding a suitable psychic is more difficult than Zoe imagined. No. Just haven't got that right feeling. Next, next. Andy sits down with Alan's book prepared to analyse, identify, direct and take action. By the end of this chapter, you should be able to identify any given pricing technique as cost-orientated, profitability-orientated, competitor-orientated or marketing-orientated, given an appropriate cost, demand profit and competitive data or calculated price. Explain the pros and cons of using cost or market price to determine transfer price. <laughs> oh. Well, not quite a bit, but some of the things I'm seeing in here is uh, new to me. Zoe finally heads for a small house behind the front, where psychic Paula Paradima, a once legendary Blackpool figure, now resides. Okay. Come on. Take. Six, Sixty, sir. I look for lottery winners, love, I've only ever seen one. Life's funny, isn't it? As many twists and turns, doesn't it? I remember being 17 and a half to 18 and a half year old. Left hand cut me these cards. Cut them as if he was playing snap. Um, do you remember having moves and changes? Yes. Mm. We don't make mistakes, love. We gain experience. You worry too much about those who have passed to the other side. Have you got that? Yeah. It's not fair, why am I here, why are they? Simple reason, look. You know, you've still got a lot to learn. The year six is what we call domestication, fabulous year for a marriage. Even better one for a divorce. Sort of property out. Now, this is supposed to have been done last year and the year before, but unfortunately, it's dragging over. So maybe now you've got this person, we can get it together and we can... There's a new animal. 
people coming into your household. I'm not going to do guessing games. I know it's got four legs, look, but apart from that, I haven't got a clue what it is. Do you understand? I, don't, I can't explain it because my stomach is still churning. Is it? Yeah, it's... it's everything was 99% accurate. I couldn't fault that. I'm quite... I'm very impressed. Very yeah. impressed with her. Yeah. Should I be like good it. for the hotel. Brilliant. Absolutely, yeah. Fantastic. That was scary. She was bob on. Bob on. Absolutely bob on. Zoe is so overwhelmed by Paula Paradima's powerful presence that she's ignoring a rather important fact. Her chosen psychic hasn't performed publicly in years. Andy is starting to wonder about his future at the president. Andy, the son and heir, has not turned up for work. Andy has decided that the hotel business is not for him. He's found a job in telemarketing. I've just heard that Andrew is moving on. Um, he's, apparently he's taking a position with another company in Blackpool, you know, marketing. Well, why do you think he's done that? Um, he obviously has his own reasons, you know. I mean, perhaps... Uh, He's analysed and identified and seen the direction and now he's taken it, you know, the old Ada thing. Biggles is on hand to commiserate with Andy's mother, Mrs Walsh. I'm very disappointed, very frustrated. Um, you know, all my hopes and my dreams have all gone down the swanee and, well, we're just going to have to get on with it and get Plan B into action. Plan B is to replace her eldest son, Andrew, with Dominic, a 25-year-old painter and decorator. Although Dominic has no marketing experience whatsoever, this is a family business, and he is son number two. When the history of the president comes to be written, the day Dominic Walsh replaced Andy will have a chapter all its own.